Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today I want to talk about the best NAS device you can buy for less than $500. Before we go any further, real quick, we're halfway through 2025, so if you're watching this a little way into the future, better options may be in the market. And also I will highlight, although all of these solutions are combined hardware and software solutions, none of them include the storage media. So although the NAS itself is gonna cost you 500 nicker, keep in mind, you're still gonna have to go out and buy yourself hard drives or SSDs, very, very important. But without further ado, let's crack on. hell did we get to a point where Unify was nothing in the world of NAS and now with one solution they have changed the game. The UNAS Pro, a 7 bay 10 gig rack mount solution for $499 has changed a lot of people's preconception towards what not only a NAS is but what exactly you can get for your money. Now the UNAS Pro has got seven SATA bays there on the front. It runs on a quad core ARM processor uh, with 8 gig of DDR4 um, pre-attached memory it's not a particularly scalable solution but i will say that as a pure storage box it really is hard to question what you're getting for your money there it has its own uh, drive uh, storage configuration supporting up to um, uh, raid 6 and raid 5 configurations there and the latest update in their drive app alongside that you can integrate it with an existing unify network or you can run it standalone as well as integrating it with cloud services for a multi-tiered uh, backup solution you can even integrate it over smb with an existing storage setup you may have in one direction or another don't look at this as a solution for running containers, dockerized applications there, virtual machines or something like Plex. This is pure, pure storage. But at 499, a 10 gig 7 bay SADA solution is very hard to argue with. And if we're going to talk about brands that have changed the status quo, these guys, Ugreen with a DXP4800. Now, I'm listing this at 499 and a few places it's actually listed a little lower than that. I've seen it on offer at 429 in some places and 519. But we're splitting our hairs down in the middle and we're going to say right there at 499. This arrives with an N100 quad core CPU, 8 gig of DDR5 memory, four SATA bays there on the front, two M.2 NVMe bays at the base. It also has 2.5 gig, two ports there on the rear. USB type A and the UGOS software included with it. It really is challenging, I think, to brands like Synology and QNAP and the status quo and the base level hardware software that you can get for this price point because this solution from Synology or QNAP, who arguably do have more evolved software, um, this level of hardware, they would be charging 599 to 699 very easily. And tipping the post at just under 500 nicker it makes this very, very appealing. Also right now, with SD card readers there on the front, USB Type-C, and ultimately, a very unique de design philosophy there on the front. I'm going to say right now, there is a reason that when users right now are getting slightly apprehensive and slightly annoyed with Synology's policy towards hard drive um, support, a lot of people are talking about Ugreen more than they are QNAP. It's really weird, but true. It's not a perfect solution. The software still has a ways to go, but it's more evolved than the Unify offering that we just talked about. And it has BTRFS support. It has multi-tier backup support. It has containerization and Plex multimedia and Docker and virtual machine. It has the feature subset that you're going to need to get things up and running. Just don't expect the universe from this right now. Now. And before we move on, it's worth highlighting one, that even if that software doesn't float your boat, you can still go ahead and install TrueNAS or Unraid on this without invalidating your hardware warranty. And moreover, there is a pro version of this that arrives with a Pentium-based CPU there and 10 GBE and Gen 4 architecture on the M.2s. You have to spend a little bit more, but nonetheless, at 499 for the non-pro version, this is still quite a bargain right now. For a lot of users, it's not about the hardware, it's about the software. And when it comes to software, we still all have to kind of agree that Synology do still rule the roost with DSM. And therefore, for users looking at the best NAS for 499, for some, it is going to be what's the best Synology NAS for 499. Now, that is a divisive question in 2025. Um, now, it'd be very easy to say their modern release, the DS425 Plus, rocking out with uh, an Intel quad-core processor there, 2 gig of DDR4 um, memory, and arriving with 
2.5 gig of Ethernet on the rear, one port, 2.5, one port, one gig, and a couple of M.2 slots on the base is a reasonably powered solution to make the most of DSM at that price point. However, keep in mind that the DS425 Plus for all of the benefits that Synology's DSM platform provides you, which by the way, there are many alongside support of things like their Synology Hybrid RAID mixed storage system and more, it's worth highlighting that another generation of 2025 series does have that somewhat restrictive hard drive policy. Therefore, if you want the hardware that the DS425 Plus arrive with, sans the 2.5 gig, then go for the DS423 Plus. But if you're happy to buy Synology's hard drives, uh, such as the Synology Plus series of drives, which are comparatively priced uh, to the likes of Seagate Iron Wolf, then if that's not a, you know, a bothersome thing for you, the DS425 gives you a fantastic access point into the Synology DSM platform. But just keep in mind that the kind of flexibility you have in terms of storage media on that may put you off enough that the previous generation box may be the one for you. I know a number of you probably didn't see this coming, but this, the LinkStation N2, is worthy of discussion. I've seen this online at $429 to $439, and it is both a 2 times 2.5 SATA SSD and, at the base, a 4 times M.2 NVMe NAS system here. It arrives with the M100 CPU. Alongside that, it also arrives with 10 gigabit ethernet there. This is a sub $500, pound, uh, $500 pure SSD NAS system. Again, great CPU, 16 gig, by the way, of DDR5 memory pre-attached on the board. You can't upgrade it, but nonetheless, that is a decent amount of storage. And again, although there is a lack or fail over there because there's only one 10 gig port. That's a great amount of bandwidth to play with. Also, I'm gonna highlight right now, this has Unraid included with it. That's right, you get an Unraid license for all six of those drives. And do you know what else you get with Unraid? Unraid now supports Wi-Fi dongles in Unraid 7. Why is that important? That means that you can take advantage of the Wi-Fi connection inside this as that failover. This is a sub $500 six bay flash NAS system with an Unraid license included. What the actual One year on, and I'm still raving about this, this is the Flash Store 6. The Flash Store 6 is a 6-bay M.2 NVMe storage system. It has, again, 6 times NVMe with 2 times 2.5 gigabit net there on the rear. It also adds their ADM software with a myriad of client applications for iOS, Android, and desktop computers there. It also has BTRFS. It also has Write Once Read Mini support. It also has a myriad of RAID storage and backup applications all included there and it's $449. Remember earlier on when I mentioned about the cost of media and how it's not included? Do keep in mind that some of the systems like this one arrive with their operating system on an, an area of uh, flash or EMMC storage inside. You want to have to have extra storage in here for that operating system, which is the case when you look at some NAS OSs. Moreover from that, at the moment, even without big seasonal sales on, you can pick up 4TB M.2 NVMe SSD drives for about $200. It's only about twice the price of a hard drive, which although is more, it does make six space storage systems like this. Right there at the 11th hour, in the time between me recording the video that you watched on screen and now, I've got to introduce this. This is the Terramaster F4 SSD. And although I stand by pretty much everything I said about the Flash Door 6, you know, for your money at 499 or under, I'll say right now, this thing has suddenly come into the fold. And I wanted to include it here in the video because I do think you might want to go for this one for some of you. This F4 SSD is a four times NVMe SSD NAS system. Now, yes, it doesn't have six bays, so you might be thinking, oh, we're working from behind. Well, let's carry on. It arrives at 399 right now. And again, we said this about TerraMaster before, they're a brand that have a tendency to rock out discounts all the live long day. On top of that, the system arrives with a 5 gigabit Ethernet port there on the rear. So again, some of you are going to prefer the fact that this has got 2 times 2.5 gig because you've got the failover. Others 
don't really want to muck around with SMB multi-channel, port trunk in, link aggregation, that sort of thing. And maybe they just want to go straight for the five gig. And again, remember, five gig isn't exactly common, but if you have a 10 gig port, at least you can make more of that bandwidth. Those four M.2 NVMEs inside here, although this has got six, all six of those are Gen 3 times one. Two of these are Gen 3 times one, but the other two are Gen 3 times two. That's twice the performance threshold for the M2 NVMEs inside here. Now again, whether you're weighing up performance versus capacity is a debate to be had. Also, four of these, if you raid them together, you're probably gonna get bottlenecked on those other two by the slower two NVMEs. But still, that high performance with two parallel running storage pools is an option. Alongside that, this arrives with eight gig of DDR5 memory, not four gig of DDR4 memory. So high performing memory as well with on die ECC, not truly ECC obviously. Um, but alongside that, this has the CPU, the N97. It's the Intel Twin Lake CPU there, rather than the Intel Celeron that's inside. This is a much newer processor with a better balance between its low um, performance, uh, I think it's 0 0.8, gigahertz there, but it can be burst up to 3.4 when it needs to, with a higher integrated graphics rating as well. Also, both of these are turnkey NAS solutions, but there's actually a lot more AAA features on the TerraMaster platform on TOS 6. We talked about it in its own dedicated review, and the Asus Store's platform is good, but between the two of them, the Asus Store one feels more uh, feels more consistent, it feels more design rich across the apps, but there's more feature rich applications on the TOS platform. Both of them support third party, operate, uh, third party operating systems, true as Unraid, without invalidating the hardware warranty. I wanted to add this section to the video, because as I say, I stand by everything I said about the Acer store, but as soon as this F4 SSD arrived here in the studio, I wanted to include it in this, but it's available now, and it's $100 clear of our target in this video. But there you go, those are the best NAS devices I'd recommend buying right now, halfway through 2025 for $500. Now, some of you are gonna be wondering, where's QNAP, where's TerraMaster? And you are right to ask, why aren't QNAP on this list? Well, because the nearest solution to that price point that I could find for that money was the 4262. And, it was just outpaced financially as some of the options that we've talked about today. And when it comes to TerraMaster, TerraMaster, if you just spend one to $200 more, you've got things like the Pro and the Max in some of those two, four and six bay solutions, right the way up to about eight or $900, where they really will give you phenomenal hardware value, as well as supporting the likes of TrueNAS and Unraid installations there but none of them really conformed to the $500 remit of today's video. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Maybe there's something I've missed. And for those thinking about DIY, you're right. You can probably save a bit of bunts with DIY, but this video is about out the box solutions. But thank you so much for watching. There's links in the description to every one of the solutions I've talked about today. So do you use those links. It results uh, in a small commission here to NAS Compares, allowing me and Eddie to keep doing what we do. And there's also links to reviews for every single solution we talked about today, linked below as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.